five years. To some, that may feel like a short amount of time, a fraction of a lifetime, or a blink in the cosmos. To the Fire Talon Dwarves, that was an eternity. An epic saga whose story is filled with heroes and triumph, nightmarish beasts and world-burning fires. A story of grit and of peril and heartbreak. So grab your stool and your ale, and I will tell you the story of the Fire Talon Dwarves. On the western side of the world, deep in the heart of the entangled waters, there's a small island. Rightfully named the Molten Island, this is home to the world's volcano. This will also become the home of the Fire Talon Dwarves. Immediately upon landing, after a long journey, our seven mighty dwarves made their way to the top of the volcano, now named Fire Talon. This small group of dwarves, made from the finest the mountain homes could offer. Zahn, our metalsmith. Edder, our woodcutter. Ilra, our expedition leader, the brains of it all. Kadol, our carpenter. Moses and Domas, our farmers. And Saigon, our fisher dwarf. It is these seven dwarves' responsibility to establish a fortress inside of this volcano. We have until winter before the mountain home comes with supplies. Quickly striking the earth and digging down below the surface, our dwarves made a home. It was rough and rudimentary, but it was a home. Our farmers wasted no time, quickly planting crops and digging fields to secure our food storage over the next few months. Workstations began to spring up across the fortress, allowing our skilled dwarves to make new products and tools. A source of fresh water was found in a nearby valley. It was a rare find our dwarves had prepared to only find salt water on this island, so fresh water was a sight for sore eyes. The livestock that the dwarves brought, a couple dogs, cats, and a handful of pigs were moved into pasture land and inside the fortress. Very soon, it was apparent that this island was abundant with wildlife, as a pack of dingoes passed through our land. This is something the dwarves are going to have to watch. They don't want to lose any livestock this soon. It's fall of our first year. Fruits and nuts across this land have started falling to the ground, allowing our dwarves easy access to gather them. This should increase our food stockpiles until the winter. Early autumn of our first year, the mountain home brought supplies. We welcomed the caravan in with open arms, bringing up a large bin of gems that we had mined out of the volcano. Once the caravan left, leaving for the mountain home once again, we set to work on taming fire talent. Using the stones we mined from all around it, we created a platform over the flowing magma. Then to harness the magma's power, we built obsidian smelters over it. Knowing we needed more room for migrants, we struck out to hollow the insides of the mountain around Fire Talon. With our production increased and more stones than we know what to do with, we expanded on our production platform over Fire Talon itself, allowing us to use the heat of the magma to craft glass, clay products, and also forge metal. Right on cue, early autumn, year 101, traders from the mountain homes arrive. They brought back what we asked for in the previous year. Animals. Seeds. Things to increase our food production for this next year. We are running low on proteins. With Fire Talon having nowhere to fish, we are very reliant on our livestock. A handful of chickens and some more pigs will do us just fine in the coming years. We sent the traders back with plenty of gems and crafts from our fortress. We built a hospital to accommodate any injured dwarves in the fortress. We had a handful of skilled doctors that were happy to work there. After many long hours in the workshop, Ilrol, our expedition leader, created our first artifact. We placed this artifact right outside of our dining room and dormitory. That way every dwarf passing by could see the handiwork of a Fire Talon dwarf. Now with the raw power of Fire Talon under our control, we began crafting iron weapons for our dwarves. This will provide security for our fortress. We sent our dwarves picking hands down into the depths of Fire Talon itself, stripping it of its metal ores and gems. Those metal ores would go to the protection and the construction of Fire Talon. With these new weapons and armor, we were able to create a squad of some of our best fighters. We created a barracks for them to train, sleep, and store their weapons. A migrant dwarven child of Fire Talon it and created another artifact, this time a bracelet. 
Spring of the year 102, we received a massive migrant wave from the mountain homes. They heard of the great work we were doing here at Fire Talon and wanted a new opportunity. We welcomed not only them, but their livestock that they brought with them as well. With more mouths to feed, we now had to increase our food production. Autumn of the year 102, we received another caravan from the mountain homes. This time they brought bins upon bins of cloth and leather, which we desperately needed. Once again, we sent them home with a wagon full of crafted goods and gems from our fortress. With a new influx of population, people needed homes. Private lives of families and marriages needed privacy. So we went about filling up the insides of the hollowed out portion of Fire Talon with bedrooms for our dwarves. In the winter of year 102, with our food and ale production in full swing, plenty of space, bedrooms, and workstations for our dwarves, a tavern was due. Now we knew we had to build the best tavern that any dwarf has ever seen. A tavern so good dwarves will be talking about it in the afterlife. So that's exactly what we did. We built this tavern from obsidian and rocks found deep inside a fire talon. Set our best dwarves to engraving the stone around it and place statues of historical figures and deities from all around. With the tavern's construction complete, we set upon building a place of worship, a place where dwarves can meditate and pray to their gods for good fortune. With the fortress coming together and our dwarves happy, we decided to delve deeper into the depths of Fire Talon, searching for what the mountain has in store for us. In the fortress, our newborn military honed their skills, sharpening their blades, polishing their iron armor, and training as a unit. Autumn of the year 103, We've built more and more bedrooms as our population has boomed. A trap corridor for enemies has been built, lined with weapons and rockfall traps. On the surface, walls and drawbridges constructed to protect our dwarves. And once again, the mountain homes sent us a caravan of supplies. After trading with the mountain homes, we went back to hollowing out Fire Talon. Mid-autumn of the year 103, a giant of unparalleled size attacked us. This giant, Otheta, had been rumored to kill five goblins in the past. She was a tough and fear-worthy warrior. With our scouts spotting her early, we were able to raise our drawbridges in defense. On the hunt, she knew there was an opening in her fort. She quickly rushed over to our trap hallway entrance and ran in. Unsuspecting and blood-hungry, our traps did exactly what they were supposed to do. A large serrated iron disc separating her neck from her head, the giant had fallen. Although no swords met flesh, it was a victory all the same. All of our dwarves safe, and an enemy defeated. Spring of the year 104, our efforts of diving into the depths of Fire Talon were answered. We struck a cavern. Quickly we set about building walls to create a safe place in the caverns. Our military joined our builders down there to offer some protection while they built. Stone walls shut off all connections to the outside caverns, for we did not know what was lurking down there in the darkness. After more exploration of the caverns, we found fresh water. The water on the surface had worked for an amount of time, but it was stagnant. The fresh, clean water of these caverns would offer us a better option. For the health and safety of our dwarves, we went about building a platform and then wells over this water. The summer of the year 104, with the fort in good shape, a few victories under our belts in the defense of Fire Talon, a new dining hall was in order. Again decorating this dining hall with the finest materials from inside of Fire Talon. It would provide our dwarves with a great place to sit, eat well-cooked meals, and tell many tales. After the construction of our dining hall, we needed a dungeon. We had no uses for it yet, but it was better be safe than sorry. Autumn of the year 104, a nightmarish beast was spotted lurking about in our caverns. This beast was thought to be lost in all but myth and legend. Thurku Asusador. This blind quadrupod made of selenite now lurked in our caverns. With its massive wings and deadly spit, this was a new threat, and one not to be taken lightly. Later that same year, our dwarves discovered how to catch and tame small animals leading us to taming a small chameleon that a child took on as a pet. The winter of year 104, 
This winter will be remembered forever by the Fire Talon Dwarves. Two Fire Imps clawed their way out of hell and made their way up Fire Talon. Our fortress had to be defended. Our military had been training for this moment for four years now. They were well prepared and well armed. Our militia squad of dwarves set upon the Fire Imps in a forest just south of Fire Talon. The Fire Imps, knowing that they were surrounded with nothing but hate and rage in their heart, immediately set fire to the surroundings. Our dwarves pushed through. With an enemy still in sight, fire could not stop them. With the squad slaying one fire imp and the other one trying to run for its life, our dwarves knew we couldn't let it go. Knowing the destruction that this fire imp could bring to lands around us, if not fire talent itself, our spear dwarf do some litmus rib, sprung the attack. The fire imp did not go down without a fight. With blood oozing from what was his face, his skull melted and shattered. His upper body melting within his own iron armor. Doosum laid the killing blow on the fire imp. Surrounded by fire, knowing he was going to die from blood loss, and hardly even recognizable anymore. Doosum proudly laid down his life in defense of Fire Talon. The rest of the militia squad retreated back to the fortress. A forest fire had been set ablaze. The fire quickly ravaging through the lands, setting fire to grass, trees, and the wild animals. All the dwarves retreated inside of the fortress, seeking safe haven. As the world ignited around the fortress, we began building a tomb for Dusum. No regular tomb would do for such a hero. As the fires across the land finally burned out, we sent out dwarves to recover Dusum's body. Having built his tomb, a golden sarcophagus, an obsidian slab, recounting his life and his final moment slaying the fire imp in defense, of Fire Talon. We asked our best metalsmith to craft two golden statues for him. Both statues are of Dusum embracing Ficid, commemorating his marriage to Ficid in the year of 95, five years before they came to Fire Talon. Leaving behind a wife and two kids here in Fire Talon, Dusum will be greatly missed, but will always be remembered as a hero. Five years. A blink of the cosmos, a fraction of a lifetime, here in Fire Talon, an adventure. This is Costa Games. I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I've never done a talk over of any video that I have pre-recorded. This was about 13 hours of game time, about five hours of footage that I've recorded, and then I spent about an hour doing the voiceover for the video. So, if you have any comments, if you have any tips or anything, I would greatly appreciate it. As you can see, I'm a very new channel. I have about 160 subscribers at the time of making this video, and I'm trying to produce the best content that I possibly can. So, if you enjoyed what you just saw, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And like I said, if you have any tips or reviews, please leave them in the comments below. I read everything. I love seeing any type of interaction with you guys, so just leave them down there. And if you happen to be new to Dwarf Fortress, I have a complete guide playlist on how to get started in this game that has a bunch of videos and I will definitely be adding to it in the future. So thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for any support you may show. And I will see you guys in another video. Peace.